You can also do ah at the top if you want. You don't have to do e. You can just go ah. I don't really like the ah right now for me. Think of yourself as an athlete. You're not going to run a marathon or do a sprint or jumps if you don't warm up your body first. First, I would do all of my physical stretching. So stretch and also listen to your body and think about the parts of your body that that need stretching and that need extra air and, and mobility. Go through all of those. Give yourself time to do these things. I, I allot myself an hour, which might seem like a long time. And for me, it always seems to go by very fast before a show. So I would do physical stretching. I would then go into my breathing exercises. And sometimes that is actually part of my physical stretching. Sometimes when I do side stretches over to the side, I'll breathe very carefully into the side of my ribs. So I'll breathe. And I always breathe. I love breathing through my nose almost 100% of the time. Doesn't always happen that way, but call it maybe 90, 95%. So I breathe through my nose and I'll exhale on an F all the way through all of these exercises. I am always conscious of not creating tension in the muscles of the neck, as well as any muscles that are inside of the neck and the vocal cords and the tongue. The tongue is a very large muscle as well. And then I'll start a little more breathing into call it singing exercises. And one that I like to do is a Start with a tss sound, and then you create. You go from an unvoiced, which is a sound that doesn't have a vibration to it, to a voiced sound, which is sort of like singing. So I would go tss like that, and then I'll do a little scale. So we could do tss, or you can do tss. You could do any version of fives or octaves. You could. Tss. But for me, this is not so much about the singing as it is so much about the support. So it's about inhaling and feeling the bottom connection of your support, which are quite low muscles, muscles that little kids have a hard time holding on to sometimes in the upper arms. Those muscles tuck in, and that's what's helpful and part of your support. Then you can change from the tss, which is sort of like a TS consonant cluster, to a V, which is a V. And you want the V, again, to have a really strong connection to your core, but again, it's not it's not these muscles here. It's a direct connection to your actual core. So again, I quite like these. These are really good sometimes when you're off on the side of the stage and you can't make a lot of noise, but you're trying to maybe warm up a little bit more or you feel like you're missing a connection somewhere in your mechanism. Doing some variations in the dynamics is really important, even in your warm-ups, because you're getting all of these things as a habit. The V, you can start with a little crescendo. You can decrescendo, get a little softer, and then ascend to the top note and then come down. And again, they should all be quite gentle, I think. Sometimes when you're in a rush to warm up, we tend to push through our warm-ups. We tend to sing louder because we think we'll get warmer faster. The opposite tends to happen, and then you're in trouble because you've sort of done too much too quickly. A lot of times when we come down in our warm-ups, like in actual pitch-wise, is when we tend to drop our support because it's as if gravity is just bringing everything and going down to the ground. Those are the moments when you actually want to make sure your support is really working for you. So you could do another exercise like... And think the opposite. Instead of thinking about going down, think of going up with your support as the pitch comes down gently, as if you were putting something down that was very, very, very valuable and very breakable. You're not gonna put it down hard, you're gonna put it down softly. Think of it that way. But I'd like to do sometimes, and not all the time, it depends again on how you're feeling, a vocal fry, which is the sound you make with your voice, where you go, ah, uh, like that. And it's a funny sound, and you don't necessarily want that sound on your singing, but the vocal fry actually, if you do it, again, gently, it sort of, teaches your chords how to sort of zipper a lot of times if we just start in on our warm-ups and we go you get little blips or things or you hear a little air seeping through your chords and I find that the vocal fry tends to help me 
kind of close my vocal cords together without gaps in the air and there so the air doesn't escape as much so and i'll do that sometimes in a plank and i'll get into a plank and i'll start and the key is it's hard to teach this on a video so be gentle with yourselves if you try think of going from your your it's sort of like you're going up a little bit with the pitch until you sort of inevitably have to start singing. It doesn't have to be pretty. It can be ugly sounding. You're trying to find the resonance in your, in, in your sinus cavities. And in order to do that, singers make all sorts of weird sounds. So own your weirdness. Own the sounds you make and have a lot of fun with them. <laughs> So other fun sounds that I love to do are lots of, I love E's. You can stick your pinkies between your molars. Here. I bet you're trying this at home right now. I know you are. Yeah, it gets a little drooly. So you stick your pinkies in your molars. I did. Super, super sexy. And you sing your E. And again, no pressure here in your neck, no pressure anywhere here. It's about connecting to your core, a nice breath, inhale and exhale, go up your scale. And the point is when you get to the top, you're not going to necessarily open your mouth. You want to find what we call the core of the sound, which is a small sort of pinpoint of sound that travels up and down, stays rather calm and narrow. The opposite would have just been doing right now since I'm not completely warmed up I don't know if you can hear the difference but what tends to happen there when it opens too much it gets a little what I would like to call woofy which is not particularly beautiful in my opinion nor does it actually put me on the path that I want to be on in terms of my warm-ups which is to get a really clean clean core sound first and then sort of add the rest of the warmth and the tone to the sound weird habits. I tend to look up when my notes go up too, don't I? So many weird things that we do. But those are actually not so terrible. They're pretty good. And what I tend to feel when that's happening, I actually feel as if the note were a little marble, as if it kind of goes up here to my third eye and then back down. And it's a nice feeling because it's completely out of my throat, entirely out of my throat. And then from that, you can kind of continue and find more uh, I like to say find the rest of the resonance of your sound once you've found the actual center structural core of your sound. So have fun with that.